Hey there, this video is gonna be a dynamic range comparison between the two flagships from Canon and Sony. We have the R3 and the A1. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Josh, and on this channel I focus on videography, content creation, and of course, really cool camera gear. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're in the right place. A couple different modes on each of these cameras we're gonna be comparing. So starting with the R3, the big mode will be 6K RAW. I did a full video breakdown about 6K RAW, which I'll leave linked down below. So if you're interested in learning more about it and you know its strengths and weaknesses, please go check out that video. Now, this camera shoots in C-Log3, but if you shoot in 6K RAW and you bring it into your computer, your NLE will interpret it as C-Log2, but this camera does not shoot in C-Log2. Now, if you wanna shoot in non-RAW, the highest mode is gonna be 4K all I and and in DCI, and the reason why I'm, I'll am i be shooting in DCI is because the bra is in DCI as well, and that's a 6K oversample. Now onto the A1, there's, you know, you can shoot in 8K or 4K, so in 8K, I'll be shooting in the XAVC HS and the higher bit rate, and in 4K in XAVC SI, but we'll get into bit rates and stuff later on in the video. At this point, I've made several videos about dynamic range testing, and in those videos, I talk about why I test the way I do. I wanna get into that in this video, but if you're interested, I'll leave those videos linked down below for you to check that out. So let's get into the latitude tests or the push-pull tests. And for these to get proper exposure, I use a gray card and zebras. So I'll set my zebras at 35% IRE for C-Log3 and 41% IRE on S-Log3. And so to get my exposure, I start off at zero stops or sort of the baseline of it. And I will set my ISO at the base of 800. The shutter speed is one over 50 for 24 frames a second. And then I'll set my aperture and then change the aperture to let more or less light in. So for example, with the overexposure test, I will set the aperture at F16, get the proper exposure, and then open up the aperture to let in more light to overexpose the image, and then I just adjust it in post. In terms of grading, I didn't use any LUTs, I just did a basic correction to bring back contrast and saturation. And then for each clip where it is over or underexposed, I just adjusted the exposure, I didn't change the color at all so you could see what's going on with the color. So at first we'll take a look at the R3, looking at the 6K versus the 4K. And so I did this in my 6K breakdown video, but I might as well include it here. So let's take a look at that for overexposure. I've been really impressed with the R3 in terms of the highlights, and you can see from this testing that the 6K RAW is good up through five stops overexposed. Now, I didn't have enough light or fast enough lens tested beyond that, but I'd say the 6K RAW has about one or just over one more stops of dynamic range in the highlights. So let's take a look at the underexposure test. And for this, I set the exposure at f2.8, and then I closed down the lens to underexpose the image and then raised up the exposure in post. The R3 does okay in the shadows. It doesn't do amazing. I'd say it's good down to around negative two or negative two and one third stops and past that it gets pretty noisy. Now the 4K also has a color shift in the shadows to keep in mind. The 6K I think maybe is slightly better, but it also brings in a little bit of noise, but the noise isn't really that bad. But if you wanna shoot in 6K raw, you probably wanna add just a little bit of noise reduction in post. Now let's take a look at the A1 and the 8K versus the 4K. So again, we'll start with the overexposure test. <music> 
In terms of overexposure, I think the 4K and the 8K looked pretty similar in the A1. I'd say they were really good through four stops over and the image started to break at five stops. This was pretty similar to the R3 in its 4K mode. So let's take a look at the underexposure. The A1 was very impressive in the shadows and I would say it was good down till around negative four stops, which is absolutely incredible. I'd say the 4K and the 8K looked pretty similar here, but I would also say that the 8K was just a little bit cleaner where the 4K had a little bit more noise. Now we'll compare these two. We'll look at the R3 6K RAW versus the A1's 8K because that's kind of the best that these two cameras can shoot internally. And we'll start with the overexposure test. One thing I want to know about the overexposure test is I had to set up the lighting just a little bit differently because I had to expose the A1 just a little bit higher. Remember 41% versus 35%. So they look a little bit different. But anyways, take a look at the overexposure test. Now this wasn't really surprising based on the previous tests that we just saw, but the A1 performed much like the R3 does in its 4K mode. I would say the R3 has about one more stop of dynamic range in the highlights. So let's take a look at the underexposure comparison. I was seriously impressed with the performance of the A1 in the shadows. The R3 was good down to about negative two and a third stops, whereas the A1 was good down to about four stops underexposed. Now I didn't test it at negative four and a third or negative four and two thirds, but I probably conclude that the A1 gives us about one and two thirds or two stops better performance in dynamic range in the shadows. So overall, let's put this all together here. So the R3 gives us about one more stop in the highlights. The A1 gives us about two more stops in the shadows. So combined, I would say the A1 has about one more stop roughly of dynamic range, which is really impressive, especially because the R3 is shooting in a raw format versus a compressed format in either 8K or 4K. Now that shift of highlights and shadows, I think probably comes down to the way the cameras are recording the information, the log curves, and also we have to you know, expose it 41% versus 35%. So let's take a look at an outdoor example here to sort of see what this looks like beyond just inside the studio. And so for all the, the studio testing, as I said, I was using a gray card in Zebras, but when I exposed outside in more run and gun situations, I basically use the histogram and bring it up to clipping and then back it down just a little bit. If you're curious about how I do my exposing and grading for run and gun stuff, I made a video about that. I'll leave that video linked down below as well. So this, this shot here, I did in a couple different modes, which we'll compare. So it's me in the shade with a bright background. So we sort of test out the dynamic range a little bit. So let's take a look at these examples. Mm -hmm. 
I was really impressed with both of these cameras and all of these different modes. I think they both produce amazing images. And of course you would expect that with two flagship cameras. So for the, in the first example with the R3 and the 4K versus the 6K RAW, I did talk about this in depth in that 6K RAW video. But one thing I noticed a big difference between these two was the highlight roll off was a lot better on the 6K RAW. And you can definitely notice that on the pavement there, the highlight roll off or just the way that the highlights look are much more pleasing. In terms of the A1, looking at the 4K versus the 8K, they look very similar to me. And of course, this is all in a 4K timeline and <laughs> they, I would say that they both look really good. And onto the last comparison, which is probably the most important, the r 3 6K RAW versus the A1's 8K. Again, I think the, the subtle differences here where the highlight roll off was a little bit nicer on the 6K RAW and the R3, you can see that again on the road behind me. But also I would say that the A1 has slightly more detail in the shadows. Again, these are both subtle differences. I think in real life, you're probably not gonna see a huge difference between these two. And it was interesting to see the, the sort of the highlight performance and the shadow performance sort of, in my opinion, line up with what I got in the studio. The dynamic range capability of a camera is really important to me. And that's why I like to make all these comparisons and tests and share them with you. But a part of this conversation here is going to be the bit rates. And this is where I think the A1 is just even more impressive because it has more dynamic range than the R3. Now the R3, to get the most dynamic range, you should be shooting in 6K RAW. And there's two different options. There's RAW and RAW light. So at 1600 megabits per second or 900 megabits per second, they're both pretty large. Now in testing those, I didn't see a huge difference. I haven't done extensive testing. It might make more of a difference with motion and those sorts of things. But between the two of them, they look very, very similar. Now onto the A1, if you're shooting in 8K, you can shoot in 520 or 260 megabits per second. You can shoot in 4K in a couple different flavors, SI, S, and HS, but I did all this test in SI at 240 megabits per second, but you can even shoot at 4K in the HS mode at 100 megabits per second, and you saw how similar the 4K and the 8K were. Now when the A1 came out, it only had 10-bit 420 in the 8K mode, but they have added 10-bit 422 in a firmware update since, so all the options you get in this camera, you can shoot in 10-bit 422. Now to get the most dynamic range on the R3, as I said, you really should be shooting the 6K RAW. But what's really impressive, as I said about the A1, not only does it have more dynamic range than the R3, but the file sizes are just so much more manageable. To me, I would totally rather shoot in 8K at 260 megabits per second than 6K RAW light at 900 megabits per second and get more dynamic range out of this camera. Anyways, I know these cameras aren't specific video cameras, but they do have very high-end video features, and I wanted to see how they did head-to-head. -head. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.